So we're going to look at praise God, he is here. Praise God, he is here. Our anchor passage is, as soon as I know how to, all right. Our anchor passage is from John 12, 13. John 12, 13 says, took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. They shouted, praise God, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the king of Israel. They took palm branches, went down the road to meet him. They shouted, praise God, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the king of Israel. I'm going to stand up right now. Let's all please rise. We're going to do what we call the responsorial psalm. I, ra I was raised an Anglican and, and they say always an Anglican, always an Anglican. Amen. And so when we say responsorial psalm, it means I read a verse, you respond in another verse. So the verse is all there. I would read verse 1 and you read verse 2. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him with a blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the lyre and harp. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Please be seated. We will praise God. No matter what circumstances we are in, we will praise God. Tell your heart, I will praise God. No matter what, I will praise God. So our focus briefly is in John 12 that we just read, but we'll look at 1 to 13 and we'll pick certain key pieces there. The first one is, are you still there? The second one is expression of gift giving. And there will always be present naysayers when you are given the gift. And the last one is, praise God, he is here. So are you still there? Six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from the dead. A dinner was prepared in Jesus' honor. Martha served and Lazarus was among those who ate with him. Lazarus had died. Jesus raised him. And after Jesus raised him, he didn't go about his way. He was still to the course. You are here, you may have received a testimony, you may have received a blessing, but are you still thankful? They prepared dinner for the Lord's honor. Are you still preparing your heart for God's honor? Do you still allow your life to be where God can partake in, where God can come and dine with you? Martha served, Lazarus ate. Everyone had a role to play in, the, in that whole scenario where God came to visit after we have received that breakthrough after we have received that miracle what happens to our hearts do we go up our merry go away god has done it all good and then we just forget we have a lapse of memory is that who we are or are we still where god did that miracle for us the next one is expression of given Second, the next verse is verse 3. It says, Then Mary took a 12 ounce of expensive perfume made from essence of nard, and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance. Mary also played a part at that dinner. She came with an expensive gift. The gift wasn't hidden. Everyone in that house knew that a gift was being given. When you praise God in your household, does everyone know that you are praising God? Do your, do your children, do your spouse acknowledge that this gift, this gift of praise is of God? Or is it a, an interim? Or is it an interlude? The gift was about Christ, was not about herself. 
When was the last time you attended a dinner in his honor? When was the last time you gave a gift that was beyond man's expectation of him? An extravagant gift that nobody could take away from you. And gift that it is meant for the Lord. When was the last time you did that without coercion? The church is a wonderful place where you can utilize the gift that God has given to you. But are you doing it? Are you coming into the presence of the Lord and, and, and expressing that gift to those to your left or to your right? Move on to verse 4 and 6. But Judas Iscariot, the disciple who soon betrayed him, said, That perfume that you are giving is what a year's wages. Should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Not that he really cared for the poor. It wasn't about that he cared. It just was the person he is. He was a mischief. He was a thief. Because why? He was in charge of the disciples' money. And he often stole from it himself. Jesus, Judas was part of the disciples for, 12, for three years. And yet, for three years, nothing of Christ rubbed off on him. You can be coming here every day. You can be coming here every minute. And God does not rub off on you. It is a choice. He had the opportunity to be in the presence of the almighty God, his son, every day for three years, 24-7. He was doing the miracles. He was watching him do the miracles. He was having deep conversations. He was listening. There was no time Jesus Christ was in the midst of the 12 that he was not there. But yet he was not transformed by the relationship that he had every naysayer in your life may have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof they want to steal your gift and your opportunity for legacy and tell you why do you even bother you are still praying you've been praying why bother to continue how why are you going that way naysayers will always be there but remember the root of those naysayers it is not about you it is about themselves give to all that you can but press mute on them when they speak because they don't deserve your presence. You are blessed in order to be a blessing. Note that. You are freed in order to set free. You are redeemed in order to redeem others. Your gift in Christ is not for you alone. It's for the world to know and for the world to express. When you hide the gifts that God has given to you, then you are no different from Judas himself. So verse 4 says, uh, number 4 says, praise God he is here. The next day the news that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. They shouted, praise God, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. There will be naysayers in that gathering. <laughs> there will be those who will claim that they believe but truly do not believe. They are just following the flow. The crowd heard he was coming. Are you hearing him? They took branches. They responded by that noise, by that message. They went down to meet him shouting. When last did you hear him that he is coming, that he is here? In, our, in the first service, pastor said, who are you listening to? Because who you are listening to will determine how you respond. When would last did God speak to your heart? Because it is only then when it is time to praise God that it is not a chore. Because why? Revelations 3, 20 to 21 says, look, I'm standing at the door of your heart. If you hear my voice, open the door of your heart. I'll come in. I'll share a meal with you as a friend. Why? Because You'll be victorious when you sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious. And now you will sit with my father on his throne. He's coming. He is here. So take a moment now and just think, Lord, I just want to praise you. My gift to you this morning is a gift of praise. My response to you this Palm Sunday is a gift of praise. An extravagant praise that only you can give. Because you are the stone of help the one who has helped me the one who is helping me i am muting every voice in my head in my heart that is telling me not to bother to praise 
I am choosing to praise God this morning. I am choosing to adore you. Because the very breath that I have, I owe it to you. I am nothing without you. I am nothing without you. So I want you to rise up this morning. In your own way. Nobody's going to lead you. Just my brother just playing in the instrument and just begin to praise him. Just tell him, Lord, I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. I am so grateful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Invite him to dine with you this morning. Say, Father, I am grateful. I am grateful for who you are in my life. Come dine with me. Come into my heart and dine with me. Because you are here, you are here. Lord, dine with me, oh God. Dine with me, Father. I release my heart to you in praise. A few days ago, we heard that a 16-year-old who was playing soccer, 16, he was 1616, healthy, one of the top sports person in his school, just slumped and died on the field. It is not he that will let or run it. It is not because you are a sports person. No. Another one I heard knelt at the altar to give thanks on a Sunday service. I couldn't stand up. They had to lift him up to stand up. They rushed him to the hospital. By the next day, he was dead. No sign, nothing. He was healthy. That you are standing here today, April 2nd, 2023, has nothing to do with you. So take a moment and just praise him. He's worthy of your praise. He's worthy of your honor. Because if you don't do it, others will do it. I don't want to be replaced before God.